Greetings and welcome everybody. This is Chuck one more time for The Cigar Talk Show. I am honored to be once again on the rolling room floor at El Relo, also known as the J.C. Newman Cigar Factory. It is the last operating cigar factory in these United States and also my honor to be interviewing none other than Bobby Newman. Well, thank you, Chuck. Bobby, thank you for being here today. I appreciate we're, it. We're honored that you're here. We love telling our story and uh, uh, everybody has a story and uh, every, every story is unique. And I know you've spoken to, to Drew. Uh, yeah. Have you spoken to Eric, his father? Not yet. Um, okay. We have uh, taken a little hiatus and uh, happy to say we're back. Uh, we're going to try, try to put one out once a month. Wonderful. So definitely love to come back uh, in a couple of months or, and, and catch up with the rest of the family. Any, anytime. And you got to come through and have come through the hand. Have you been to the hand cigar rolling? Yet? I, I'm, I'm going to schedule that. I just noticed it in my email yesterday. So okay. absolutely excited about the hand rolling classes. You can come here, learn to do the hand rolling, uh, and you're now doing a, a, a blended tasting. If you're I doing right. tasting, and oh, that's so cool! This whole thing, and we have 24. This is Drew's idea. We have 24 different mm. types of tobaccos. Right. Wrapper, binder, filler, uh, from all Cameroon, Honduras, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. Ecuador, and different again wrappers, binders, fillers, and. It's like it's like a bourbon tasting. Oh, and truly, yeah. Because you know, if, you, if we were sitting here with a horse soldier bourbon, you would pick out certain nuances of it, and I would pick out. You made, and I would. Is and the good news is, is there's there's no wrong answer. There's no there right is not. Answer. Absolutely. And you mentioned horse soldiers. Uh, funny that you brought that up. Uh, we've looked at that as a pairing for certain blends. Right. Right. And they have three levels of their uh, blends as well. So. Like cigars, bourbon has different aftertastes. It has different uh, effects on the palate. But more importantly, I think if you're going to talk cigars, you have to talk bourbon, scotch, other adult beverages that go right. with that. Right. And this has always been a show about the cigar lifestyle. Many of you may not drink liquor. That's fine. I love a good Cuban coffee. I think coffee is a brilliant accompaniment with any cigar absolutely and there's different strengths and flavors right. of coffees obviously so I, no, exactly. cigars match perfectly with that type of, of, of beverage oh, i know speaking of horse soldiers i know we talk about different things and the i don't know if you know i think you know this but i don't know if the audience knows this that the uh, horse soldier the movie 12 strong right chris helmsworth played in it great and, movie and this and, and i've 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 Recommend it to many friends and especially the guys. They said, I've seen it four times or 12 times because it's True. incredible. It's one of these things you have to change your underwear yeah. several, several times. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's true. a true story. It and is a true story, yeah. But you know, life is funny because three of the men who were portrayed in that movie, starting with Chris Helmsworth, mm -hmm. he played the real Captain Mark Nooch. Mark right. Nooch is one of the minor. There's either six or eight Green Berets that now own Horse Soldier Bourbon. Right, They're right. minority owners. So, uh, one of the owners, Rob Schaefer, uh, Colonel Rob Schaefer, they're mm -hmm. all retired, uh, either or, they, or, or, or left before they retired. Yes, sir. Yep. But, uh, and Rob would probably kill me for telling you this. But he's a oh, please dish. <laughs> I will. So, Rob, uh, we were doing a, a, a Diamond Crown event uh, uh, in Orlando mm -hmm. at, at the Corona Cigar. Very nice and, place, yeah. Uh, so I, we work my, our regional manager, we walk in there and there's this big, tough looking green beret, hard ass, <laughs> a handsome guy, but you know, don't, don't, sure. don't, you know, mess, with don't, him, right? don't mess with him. <laughs> he and another fellow were there and they had a big pull up sign called uh, Horse Soldier Bourbon. Mm. And this was probably was long before COVID. And um, so uh, he had a dog from Southeastern Guide Dogs, which we're talking Great about organization, today. yeah. Well, thank you. It's now been renamed Dogs, Inc. Dogs, uh, Inc. So they're not just Southeastern anymore. They're right. in, they're national, if I heard that right. Right. Yeah. We've, we've been national for about 20 years, and I'll go back to Horse Soldier in a minute. Sure. But the reason the name was changed, because this is all... On May 1st of this year, mm -hmm. Southeastern Guide Dogs became Dogs, Inc. The reason why, because we're more than just a guide dog school, the, we're, we're also a service dog school. Oh, fabulous. And, 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 and we have, a, we have a, a youth program mm -hmm. for children who are born with their low vision or eye diseases. Oh, wow. And when they leave their family, when they are 18 years old or, or become 
or, or go to college, mm -hmm. they're going to need either a cane, uh, a white cane, or a service dog, so, uh, or a guide dog rather. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we also have, uh, and I'll eventually go back to 12 Strong too, but uh, so what happened uh, with the old Southeastern guide dogs, they would partner with wonderful people like Petco, but yes. they would only do it in the southeast. I see. And, be, and same thing with Subaru. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you ever, if your viewers uh, and listeners have seen, uh, if you watch television or cable, you'll see Subaru. Every ad they have a dog in there because they figured out the national ads. They figured out, and Madison Avenue's figured out. If you mm -hmm. put a dog uh, in print or on the uh, television or cable. Uh, People will, will they'll listen to the ad. They'll watch, they'll the, watch ad. the ad. They may not remember yeah. what it was. <laughs> yeah, truly. And, uh, so and Subaru had told us the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're great partners. Uh, we partner with them in uh, in Florida, mm -hmm. but uh, they said, "Look, you're a regional." So now, now we we all we've always the last 20 years. I've been on the board since 2000, so it's oh, 24, great. 24 years. 24 years now. Yeah. And we we've been a national. We cover all all 50 states. And it's a it's a beautiful program, but going back to uh, Twelve Strong, um, in the movie, so I call saw Rob, Rob Schaefer and um, had a uh, beautiful black lab. Oh yeah. Southeast yeah. guy said, uh, again, uh, I, I will call him after this because he will kill me. <laughs> and um, so Rob, how it's probably a HIPAA violation, Chuck. I said I always ask when I see a veteran, how does the dog help you? And he has seizures. Yeah. And I think most dog lovers know that as humans, we throw, before you have a seizure or if you have low, low, low sugar or high sugar, you can train a dog for that. Mm -hmm. So as humans, we throw off an electrical impulse. So before you have a seizure, long before you have a seizure, the dog was start pawing at you and saying, Dad, you better sit down or lay down before you drop down. Wow, yeah. And uh, so that's, and, and he's, again, he'll probably, uh, Rob, you, I'll send this link to you once we get it. But <laughs> we'll make sure that he's tagged so that he can use it as well. <laughs> absolutely. But I, I ask the special operators, uh, Green Berets, Special Forces, Green mm -hmm. Beret, uh, SEALs, AFSOC, Army Air Force, Army Air Force Special Operations, Marine, MARSOC, Marine Special Operations. They, they call them the quiet professionals. They right. never talk about it. You have to. It's like trying to peel an onion. Yeah. Uh, in a hurricane, but <laughs> I, I ask, um, I ask Rob, how many deployments have you had? And he had to think about it. Uh, over 30. Of course, when you're, especially you're in combat, and, and I represent the 99% who didn't serve. And Chuck, I told you this before. I like to thank, you, thank you for my freedom. Sir, thank you. That's very kind of you, and and the acknowledgement is is very much appreciated. Well, I speak for the 99% who, who, who didn't serve. And if, if, if it wasn't for people like you, we wouldn't be sitting here. I, I'm obviously very patriotic. Um, it, this is, you know, our first uh, show back after a couple months hiatus. And we're uh, trying to get it out in time for the 4th of July. So I will say Happy Independence Day, everybody. I hope you celebrate safely and soundly with your family and you enjoy your time. Uh, for me, it's kind of a special occasion as well. We're uh, revamping another passion of mine and that is a center for veteran artists oh, and we will be posting more about that as Bobby's showing you the flyer there. I it is that. it is just one of my favorite new uh, passion projects because it helps veterans not only with readjusting and fellowship meeting the right people but art therapy is 60% more effective than drugs for treating brain injuries and PTSD and uh, I will post a link here at the bottom of the show uh, that is cfva.vet. It's an unusual site for an unusual cause. So a little plug for that there too, Bobby. But and thank also, you very much for acknowledging that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, well, if you send me the link, the new name, I will send you. Do you take credit cards on your Sir, yes, sir. I will send you $500. Oh, my okay? gosh. That's and so and wonderful. Vet, thank you. It would be our, our, our honor, believe me. There's so many wonderful vet, vet organizations. I'm touched. And, thank you, sir. And as, there's, as you know, there, we talked about earlier, uh, offline, there's 22 to up to maybe 50 veterans every day, seven days a week, taking their own life. Yeah, 22 and a day is not, is just 22 too many. In a country as great as America, it's it, it it's it's so wrong, 
and we're proud. I have a, I, I didn't ask for it, but I, I became a, I have a lifetime board membership to Guide Dogs Inc. and um, and I started 24 years ago as a board member, and I've uh, seen the, the, the school absolutely grow and explode. And today, uh, the veterans program obviously covers all 50 states, like sure. the blind program. But it's a um, we've been able to find foundations. Titus Herman is our uh, CEO. Oh, wonderful! And they're like 15 years best fundraiser I've ever seen. It's incredible. The mission is so powerful. Yeah. If you like dogs, if you like veterans, and you like children, this is a trifecta. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's great. And yeah. we've been very, very blessed. And we will also link their information on the show. And please reach out and donate when you can to these causes. They are 100% supported by your donations. And believe me, those dogs are special creatures. They spend a lot of time with them. They do amazing tasks. Uh, Bobby was mentioning just the ability to sense uh, medical issues, but I know veterans that have uh, social anxiety issues or other related uh, injury and PTSD issues that these dogs are aware, they intervene, they are more than just a companion. They are a necessary tool, and th tools cost money. So thank you for your support on that as well. And I will say this, but we're talking about Dogs, Inc., and this is from day one. The last 20 years, mm. uh, I should, I should, since Titus has gotten, he's found foundations, uh, and I want to, I don't, two of them are anonymous, but uh, so we found foundations, we get $5 million, we take the interest, and because we have three foundations that specifically the one to support the veterans program and guide dogs. So anyone that's using a guide dog gets free food for the life of the dog. Oh, wow. Which is very expensive. Yes, it is. That's and awesome. The name of the company is From, F R O M M, okay. out of Minnesota, and it's wonderful. That, uh, and then the, if, it's, if it's a guide dog or a service dog, um, then also we another foundation has given us uh, several million dollars and we're using the interest off of that to pay for the monthly preventables. So if you have a dog, you, you have flea, heartworm, and ticks. So expensive. Very expensive. Yeah, yeah. And then as, as humans and dogs, you should always take your dog to have a major physical. Mm -hmm. So that covers the cost of that. Great. And, Fabulous. And the all emergency care, which unfortunately happens sometimes. It does. I, I'm it does. a testament to that, and it's also very expensive. Right. So, yeah, the, the, the dog's life, uh, when they become part of the family, you treat them just like a family member that you would take to the, the doctor and... They, yeah. they need their medicines, and they need, obviously, good nutrition. Uh, and, and, you know, the training is one thing, but most people, you may not realize, I'll, I'll, I'll brag a little bit, and when I've done work with dogs of that nature and, and helped volunteer some time, uh, it's important that the person is more trained than the dog. They actually take time to train the people how to properly interact with that uh, that tool. Again, it's an animal, but it becomes a buddy. It's somebody right. that follows you everywhere, literally. Oh, yeah. And to know how to communicate, interact, and, and, and show those signs, things that are, you know, obvious to you and me, but the dogs, as you mentioned earlier, can sense that ahead of time. Very cool stuff. Holden Rasmussen, <laughs> and he is the uh, our historian. <laughs> and I'm looking at one camera, and you can look at the other. But uh, we have three tours a day here, yeah. and uh, we 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 have hand cigar making classes uh, twice a week. We have tobacco tasting classes twice a week. Fabulous! Yeah. And uh, Holden is, is is the lead dog here, so to speak. <laughs> and, uh, so top th dog. <laughs> th thank you all for coming through. Thank you. Folks. And please come back. Uh, let us teach you how to make cigars by hand. <laughs> but but one thing uh, before we leave that Dogs Inc. is that there are there is no char ever a charge for our services. So the veteran comes down. Uh, he's he's staying at uh, at Dogs Inc. We, we, when I started, we had 20 acres and we were bleeding wow. money. Yeah. And we had a million dollar budget. It was. Hard, and now we have a twenty million dollar budget. We've been very success. You know, success begets success. Yeah. Everybody wants to go to a crowded uh, restaurant, and when you have a, such a powerful, again, uh, when you do people blind, uh, veterans, and children, we we have a very emerging. Uh, as I was told about, for these children who either are born with low vision or, or have or, or lose their sight, like mm. uh, retinitis pigmentosis, right? Where, you yep. know, what, what happens is that 
the tunnel vision there. narrows into nothing. Yeah. yeah, and then it eventually goes away. It's, it's all. And I tell you, it's very humbling. And uh, if you ever want to go down there, or what, we'll, we'll blindfold you, bring ever. You can talk to Titus. Uh, we'll go. It doesn't matter. I love that experience. Down. That sounds awesome. And, uh, yeah. Talk to some of our young veterans too. Sure. Because we've given out over a thousand dogs. No one's taken their life. Everyone has the same story. Morgan Watt, we had a, an event here. Morgan Watt, um, uh, his, his wife Amber works for the school. Morgan is now, uh, uh, he's going out making speeches across mm. the country and across the United States. He just did a TED Talk in Youngstown, Ohio. Oh, fabulous, month. yeah. So we had a TED Talk. Uh, I should have, I, didn't, I, I, I hardly knew you. I, I thought I would have invited you. He spoke, uh, explained what the, all about the, the, what these, these incredible things these dogs do. And there's no charge. They, they cost over $80,000. It takes two years wow. to train them yeah. by volunteers. And then and they take them young, too. They take them as a nine-week-old. Yeah. And then uh, the, the, the volunteers, they're called puppy raisers. They do all the hard work. Mm -hmm. They do they have to house break it, socialize that dog. The little puppy has to be with whoever <laughs> the handler, the volunteer, 24-7. Wow. So they go where wherever you go. You see, that I, I got a coat downstairs because these dogs like that. The mm. coat's a little big. <laughs> it's, it is, it is yeah. it's just it's precious. But it's a, it's a beautiful program, and I believe in all my heart that the good Lord loves our program because That's great. Uh, we start. We had 22 acres, and we now have over 60. I think we have 66 acres. People wow, have fabulous. donated property and money to buy more property. It's down in Palmetto, Florida. So whenever you want to go down there, uh, Chuck, please call me. I will be in touch. I, I would love to see that organization. Again, this was probably 10, 12 years ago. I, I volunteered for some of that. And well, thank you. It's, it's a heart-wrenching experience to see how that connection's made. And the human-animal bond is one thing, but somebody who needs those services and an animal has fulfilled that need. Right. They may even be alone. They may not have family or somebody to help yeah. them. And that's their only helper. And it is just an amazing experience. Yeah.